Hey guys, welcome back. Orbaum here, bringing you a discussion video. Today we're going to be talking about my favorite and the best cards, objectively, in uh, in Rebellious and Rebe and Rebel Clash. The set we're getting in May, I believe May first. I believe that's the release date. Uh, we have we have two sets here, and like this little little Charizard V Max and Grim Snarl V Max decks that we're going to discuss today. For as far as like I'm aware, and as far as what people have told me, this is going to be pretty much everything we're getting in our set. Uh, the next set in Japan doesn't release until April 20 something, which is going to be near the time of uh, of the um, pre-releases, which are probably not going to happen, but just because of the state of the world right now. But regardless, because it's kind of too late at that point, the next set is probably not going to be in uh, Rebel Clash that we're getting in May. So we're just going to go over every card we have. This is kind of like my precursor to the tabletop matchups that I know you guys all love. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I kind of like reassociate myself with the cards again and, you know, start getting in the mindset of deck building as well. So before we end the video, drop a like if you guys like this discussion content, a little more freeform. Uh, also, let me know in the comments down below what decks you really want to see me test or what decks you really want to play and, you know, all that stuff. Maybe and, and it may be anything I might have missed. Maybe like for some reason, Caterpie is your is the best card in the deck in, in the set. And I just don't realize it. I mean, look at that ability. Adaptive evolution. <laughs> let me know in the comments if you see anything like that. But we're going to go actually go over the trainers first. Uh, we're going to start from the bottom up, trainers and special energies, because that is going to kind of dictate the th conversation for the rest of the video, because, you know, uh, a deck is only as good as its support cards, right? So we're going to go over these first, and then we'll go over this very, very last, just because there's not too much that's really worth mentioning here, but, you know, maybe one or two things probably worth talking about. So we're going to go ahead and right, go right into it. So don't forget to drop that like if you have not already. Check out our lovely sponsors at Guardian Gaming as always. Code uh, Orbon for 10% off. Remember, starting now, so this is my very first Rebel Clash video, every like and comment puts you into the pool of all my Rebel Clash videos pre-release for a chance to win not only a couple of, a bunch, I should probably say, a Rebel, Rebel, uh, Rebel Clash, I always wanna say Rebel or Rebel, like I'm not very consistent with that word, Rebel Clash codes, but also a booster box as well, just like we do with every set. Thanks for our lovely sponsors. All right, so we're gonna go over this first. Twin Energy, Twin Energy is pretty good. It lets you, it's a double color synergy for non VMAX, non two price Pokemon, except for EXs. So like an expanded, it could be pretty good. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk about expanded very much in this video, but more importantly, uh, this card will definitely help make Lost March a deck again. I don't know how good Lost March is going to be, but having a DCE back in the deck is already pretty big. We have lots of ways to thin the deck, so it's gonna be pretty easy to draw into this card. Between e Evo Incense, Treasure, Quick Ball, uh, and all the other fun stuff, Orangaroo. We have a lot of cards that can help us run through our deck so that we can find these uh, twin energies easier, which means we can start hitting with Night March again. Uh, I'm not sure of many other decks that come to mind that will help, um, that will that this will be useful in, but just generally having a DCE uh, for non two prize, three prize Pokemon is pretty useful as well. So we're gonna move on. Um, Let's read each with and I'm going to choose a base game to come this card will be your hand. I mean, it's definitely not bad. Um, I'm not too sure how viable this is because we have so many strong stadiums in the format. Uh, like, so many strong stadiums in the format. I don't know if having a one turn energy uh, retrieval works. I mean, what types would appreciate this? Maybe welder decks just to constantly be able to use our welder, but we have so many ways of getting energies from the deck. Um, or the discard pile with fire crystal, so not fire. Water. I mean, Frostmoth might like it, uh, but we have Energy Retrieval. We have Energy Retrieval. I guess that's all that really needs to be said about it. Like, this card's okay, but not great. Uh, Turf Field, once during each player's turn, then Belayer Mistress with the deck for Grass Evolution Pokemon reveal and put into their hand. Nah. We have Evo Incense, um, and Grass right now has access to uh, Relic, Relic Executor, so they're not really hurting for a Grass Evolution piece. But if you're not playing around with Executor, uh, maybe in the future this card could be pretty good for sure. Um, discard the two cards and draw twice as many cards as discarded. Nope. Uh, Skyla is back. That could definitely be useful if you're looking. What is up with this angle? What's going on here? <laughs> Skyla's back. Skyla's a good card. History dictates that Skyla, although it's never been the most played card in the world, uh, has definitely seen a lot of success in the past. So being able to switch for any training card, pretty good. 
Uh, or for it, yeah, switch for check range rank card, yeah. Sonia, switch your deck up to two basic Pokemon or up to two basic energy. You're gonna put them into your hand. So it's either two Pokemon or two basic energy. It's not both and or. Um, but it, regardless, it doesn't matter because we have Quick Ball. Uh, I'm not really interested in that at all. Burning Scarf. If the fire Pokemon's card is attached to your active Pokemon and is damaged by opponent's attacks, the attacking Pokemon is now burned. No, I don't think fire needs this. Like, not to mention, does fire even have space for this? Uh, I mean, it's nice to be able to have, like, essentially a two damage, like, <laughs> like constantly hitting them for two damage every time they hit you, but I'm not super sure if that's necessary. Like, it, I don't think it fixes many numbers. Uh, so I'm not really interested in that. Now, Full Bucket is an excellent card for uh, Frostmoth decks. It definitely helps them in the future. Being able to search your deck for any two water energies and put them into your hand is great because it's deck thinning. It, you can attach them immediately and is it might be the push that we need to make a Frostmoth deck viable. We'll have to see. Um, beforehand, I would play cards like, like four energy retrieval and clay to find the energy retrievals and put energies in the discard pile as quickly as possible. Now I don't have to worry about doing that. I can just put them into my hand and attach them. So, full bucket, great card. All right, we're gonna move on to Re Rebel Clash. And here's some excellent cards here. Capture your energy, I actually really like this card. The card provides that colorless energy, but when you attach it from your hand to one of your Pokemon, you can switch your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into your bench. So, I really like this. <laughs> I think it's an excellent card uh, for cards for decks that don't require a um, an important manual attachment. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you have decks that don't need that metal energy or that water energy to turn one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't really think of anything that's like super relevant in the top of my head right now. Uh, but I could definitely see this card being played in the future, just as like an extra consistency card. You know, just to help you uh, kind of you know set up your bench more. Uh, I mean, if you have the time to attach it, then why not? Another great card is Horror Energy. The Psychic Pokemon this card attached to is your um, attach. The Psychic Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon is damaged by opponent's attack. Put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So this is really good just because we have a new card, Dragapult, coming out, and Dragapult just loves this card. But generally, it's like because we have access to Malamar, at least right now, um, having this having a Psychic Energy that is a good manual attachment is really nice. Being able to damage your Pokemon for two, just kind of like Psychic has been all about spreading damage counters, like trying to like ping your opponent. So this card is just good in pretty much any Psychic deck that needs Psychic attachments. So excellent card. I like that they're printing good special energies like this. I hope they continue this trend. Um, Lightning energy. When you attach this card from your hands to Lightning Pokemon, draw two cards. Once again, excellent. Uh, like we have great lightning decks right now between Pico Rom. Uh, I know some people like playing more Pico. I love playing more Pico. Uh, we have that new Toxtricity card. It is a special energy, which means it starts both Guzmahala. So that just obviously makes Pico Rom pretty good too. So just being able to Guzmahala and then draw two cards is just amazing. So speed lightning energy, another excellent card for sure. Galar Mine, the retreat cost of each active Pokemon is now double colors more. Now, I mean, this is an okay stadium. It's not the best, but it's excellent in a uh, in Milotic decks. Milotic is another excellent water type attacker whose attack scales based on your opponent's retreat cost. So this is a great card for that. Um, other than that, it's a, it's a pretty good disruption stadium. Uh, I mean, Absol's really good right now, but this is just a better Absol. And um, it's not just basics on like Absol too. So sometimes your opponent can evolve and retreat easier. But having, forcing them, and the fact that we have uh, uh, people play Air Balloon right now as a way to retreat whenever you have a two retreat cost, and this gets around people playing Air Balloon. So if you don't have a stadium to play, Galar Mine is a great way to disrupt your opponent for sure. Of course, everyone's favorite card that's out now. <laughs> Definitely the best card in the set for sure, I think. I, I can't think of anything that's better. Is Boss's Or, just Lysander, um, half Guzma, things like that. Choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon and switch it with their active Pokemon. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent support. Where's my phone? I thought I was gonna get a phone call just now. Hold on, guys. Never mind. I was wrong. But anyways, boss's order. Excellent card. Um, being able to work around dolls, being able to work around uh, disruption, uh, things like goons and 
you know, being able to take specific knockouts. Like we mentioned earlier, being able to put um, damage counters wherever you want is great. But combining that with being able to, you know, attack whichever Pokemon you want is even better. So Boss's Orders is a very welcome addition. Actually, I don't know. I don't know if it's very welcome. Uh, but <laughs> we haven't had Lysander in a while. And people love playing Lysander. So a Boss's Orders is here. So be ready for this $10, $20 Hollow rare when it comes out. Oh boy, what is this? Dan? <laughs> this is good old Dan. Uh, draw two cards, play rock, paper, scissors. If you win, draw two more cards. Hey, draw four. And remember, rock, paper, scissors is never truly random. It's all about that. It's a very psycho, it's a very um, big mental game, you know? So, uh, draw four. Mm, just kidding. Moving on. Discard two cards from your hand in order to play this card. Okay, minus two. Your opponent reveals their hand, choose a trainer card you find there, put it in the bottom of your opponent's deck. That's actually not too bad because you can really, like this is this is not a terrible card. It's not great because um, we don't really have a way to loop this in standard, like we don't have eggs in standard. So we can't just put two cards in our hand, discard them, use this effect. But it could be a nice little one of, thanks to uh, the card we're gonna get in this set, in one of these sets, um, Eldegoss. Having these random one of stadiums, or um, not stadium supporters, could be pretty decent. Being able to take your opponent's hand, getting their um, professor's research, put it in the bottom of the deck, which means you're not going to draw into it again, at least not that copy, uh, is pretty handy. I don't know if it's the most disruptive thing right now, because we have access to a Ranguru, Jirachi, um, we have Quick Balls for the Denes. I could definitely see this, see this be good in the next set, and in, in, uh, in post rotation, I should say. Uh, whenever we lose all those cards but for the time being it's definitely not bad if you're looking for a quick disruption card card shovel if this pokemon this, the pokemon this tool is attached to is knocked out by damage from opponent's attack it's got top two cards of your opponent's deck excellent obviously um you can make your opponent not knock out dolls <laughs> uh i mean mill technically got weaker because boss's order is out and you can now just boss order around whatever they make active uh, so having access to curse shovel uh that you can put on pokemon that you're that you know your opponent is going to want to knock out is a great way to help kind of you know push the milling a little bit more so if you're a big fan of mill there you go tool scrapper is you know pretty handy right now being able to discard any two tools from from either player's pokemon is pretty good Obviously, there's the obvious ones like Metal Frying Pants, Bell Tag. There's also tools like uh, Giant Charm, Big Charm, whatever it's called. Uh, that card is kind of annoying if you're looking to take some knockouts that's very specific with their math. So if they choose to play the big tool, now the Big Charm, you can get rid of it now, which is pretty good. It's no Fuel Blower because you, it doesn't get rid of stadiums, but being able, to, being able to get rid of tools is pretty okay. I'm trying to think if there's any, if there's any other like super good tools right now i guess you can get rid of uh, the curse shovel so that's pretty good um is there any other tools that i missed i don't think so uh so yeah so tools grabber pretty welcome i know i was thinking about playing it in uh some uh Z zashi index Z zashi index because of the fact that um that that frying pan is actually really is a really big nuisance in the mirror especially if you're playing the lucario my metal deck to specifically deal with the um the adp versions because when they play the frying pan themselves you can't actually knock them out anymore but if they if you take out the frying pan you can take a knockout they can't oko you in return so i do i am a very big fan of the tool scrapper right now nugget is really interesting uh play this card when you drop from your deck at the start of your turn before putting it into your hand um so i don't think this card works in your opening hand uh because you don't you don't start your turn in your opening hand you know what i mean so i think this card only works if you draw hard into it which we have ways to manipulate our top deck for sure so that that's not great honestly like i'm trying to convince myself but like what if you can end your turn of putting a rangaroo this on top of your deck your opponent can always like shuffle you uh, they can you you can draw off a of Marnie a reset stamp and those won't work because it's not the start of your turn. Uh, we do have this card over here in the very very bottom called uh, Rotom Phone. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose a card you find that shuffle your deck and put the card on top of your deck. That's something, but you have to draw hard into it. So I, I'm gonna say a hard pass. I don't think I like Nugget very much. 
At first I thought it was a lot better than it was because I thought like whenever you drew it, like no matter what 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 part of the game you were in, you'd be drawing three. But if that's not the case, then I don't think this card is as good as I thought originally. Scoop up net is probably the best item card in the deck, in the set, I mean. Uh, with Boss's Order being the best supporter, and I kinda wanna say Galar Mine being the best stadium. And then you know I like all the energy, so. But Scoop Up Net is super good for a lot of reasons. One, uh, Scoop Up Net lets you put any non two or three prizer Pokemon into your hand. So, and then discard all of it from your bench to your hand, or I guess any anywhere, including the active. But you discard all the cards attached to it. This is good for a few reasons. We have a lot of good bench sitters right now, like Jirachi and uh, yeah, Jir what's the other ones? We have Jirachi, Oranguru. We have stuff that have high retreat cost or are kind of easy to like stall in the active or like we kind of want to uh, switch between that can really benefit from acting activating scoop up net like say that you play switches and pokey and uh, um the skateboards for your jirachis scoop up net is another way to get it out of your active and you play it down again you can use that ability again because it's a new pokemon on the board right <sighs> other cards are this is great for is things like um Zigzagoon, the one that can put damage counters as soon as you play it. You play Zigzagoon, scoop up net, play it again, scoop up net, play it again. That's three damage counters on the board right there. Uh, it's great for your evolution Pokemon if you're looking to chain evolutions. Uh, like, this is gonna be really fun and expanded <clears throat> with cards like dolls and stuff like, not dolls, uh, bats and Greninjas and stuff like that. You can evolve one Froakidear, put two damage counters on the board, uh, you scoop up net, put the Froakie down, evolve your other Froakie into another Froakidear and another two damage counters on the board. And this is probably why they didn't make Lanoon have that middle evolution effect we're so used to, that's two damage counters on the board. So I guess that makes sense, right? But being able to reuse things like uh, like um, that one card, uh, Mewtwo, the Mind Report Mewtwo. I, I've seen a Dragon Ball deck list that played a one of them drum minor, minor report Mewtwo combined with a Rangaroo, being able to put a supporter from the top of your from your discard pile to the top of your deck and use a Rangaroo to draw into it. It's pretty good because of that way you're not having to put things like the Eldegoss, which we'll go over later, uh, as a two prize Pokemon on your bench. You can't pick up the Eldegoss, but you can pick up the Mewtwo and then use that ability again later. Um, what else is there? There's Absols, anything that gets stuck in the active that's non two prizer, uh, that's pretty good. I, I just, it's a great card. That's really, really versatile. Also, you have games where you know you have all these Pokemon you want to play down, but you never want to fill up your bench because you want to play these Pokemon, or you might, you might like, you don't want to play this to Dene down because then your bench is full because you want to draw into a different Pokemon. Scoop of Net really helps alleviate that whole bench being full issue as well. So I like Scoop of Net. Talked on and on about it. Probably my favorite card so far that besides Boss's Order. So we have a few great cards. Now let's go over the Pokemon now. We're going to start with the VMAX Rising and here we'll start from the top because why not? I'm going to go over the Pokemon that, I, that I'm pretty sure I've, I've looked over this a few times. So I'll go over the Pokemon that I know are worth mentioning. And then if you, if I miss anything, let me know in the comments down below and we can have a discussion about it in the comments. We have right here, Rillaboom V. I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of the VMAX Rillaboom combo right now, only because uh, we're gonna, you know what, I'm actually gonna jump ahead because it's kind of relevant to the conversation and how we're gonna talk about the rest of these cards is the two cards I think are going to be the best in this upcoming format, as far as like these cards go. We'll start with Dragapult V, right? So Dragapult V and Dragapult VMAX, I think are probably the two best not two, obviously. The VMAX Dragapult is one of the best decks that are probably going to come out of this set. Uh, now, Dragapult V, 210 HP, but it's really important to know that like it's a Psychic Pokemon Sweet the Dark, which means you can tackle Mewtwo a lot easier than you would otherwise, and, you know, that's pretty relevant just in general. With 30 for one, not too bad, and Assault Jet, 6 damage. If this Pokemon is on your bench, it became your active Pokemon, it does 80 more damage. So, okay, 140, not, not too great. For two energies, though, it's not bad. Technically, it does more damage than the VMAX, but the VMAX is where it's at. Uh, 60 damage for one, which is already pretty good. Uh, just being able to ping your opponent for 60 damage isn't affected by any of your any effects, so you can hit past things like Zamazenta, which they still have resistance, so it's probably not the best idea. But the fact that you can is already worth mentioning because Zamazenta, I can see being, seeing a little bit more play thanks to how good these VMAX Pokemon are going to be. Uh, Giganto Phantom does 130 damage and then put 5 damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you like. So 
this combined with having one or two of the of the psychic energies is pretty good. I've seen some deck lists play things like spell tags in case they get knocked out. I actually don't like that idea. I really like the idea of playing things like um, Big Bomb, Giant Bomb, I believe was what it's called. Where's my psychic book of friends here there? Uh, Giant Bomb. But you have 320 HP, which means uh, besides ridiculous attacks, nothing is going to Oko you. So you get, you're pretty much going to be putting 260 damage on board plus a hundred more damage because you're putting five damage counters on your Pokemon and your opponent's bench Pokemon anyway. you like. Now that is relevant. It can't be your act. It can't be your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, but combining this with things like Zigzagoon and all the stuff I talked about with the scoop up net makes this deck pretty good. They damage you, they you put two damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon, which is really relevant math fixing for things like Sashian for things like ADP, for a lot of different things in the meta right now. 130 damage is already good to a KO numbers. Um, great card. I think this card is really going to define a lot of the meta. Um, being able to damage things like Frostmoth uh, or Snom, uh, taking knockouts on them before they evolve, or to a KOing them on the bench because they have 90 HP. I think they have 90. I'm pretty sure they have 90. It's great for Sinchinos. Um, because you're placing damage counters, which means things like Mew don't stop it. Uh, what else is it relevant for? I mean, it's super relevant for Dedenne's, right? You can put three damage counters onto them, of the five damage counters onto Dedenne, and then bosses orders them, take a knockout on them. Um, it's just really good math fixing that you can just put anywhere on the board. And of course, you can combine this with things like Shrine of Punishment, which is great. Uh, your retreat cost is one, which is kind of relevant because Milotic ADP is a deck that I'm seeing that has been seeing success in Japan. So having a low retreat cost does kind of you know matter. Because your attack costs are so low, you can play things like Malamar uh, and like things like Hyper Potions and stuff like that. Just some healing options for you. Um, and then you can recharge yourself with a manual attachment plus. Uh, plus a Malamar recharge, you can play your switches, scoop up nets, things like that. So this deck is really, it seems really easy to build and really uh, annoying to play against. So hope you are ready to deal with Dragon Ball. I think it's a great looking artwork too. So I'm really excited about Dragon Ball. So that's, that's the first card. And then the other card I think is going to do super well is Toxtricity, VMAX in particular. But let's go over the V first. 210 HP just like the previous one. This one has a higher retreat cost, but only two. Same as the VMAX, so not that big of a deal. Poison Jab is 20 and Poison, so you're doing 30 damage. Not too bad. Uh, seems like that's a pretty common trend uh, for one lightning energy. Of course, you are playing lightning, so you have to keep in mind the Cocoa Prism, the Electro Powers, the Thunder Mountains, uh, the, the Pika Roms, the um, Zeraora. There's a lot of lightning support that's amazing out there. So you have to keep that all in mind when talking about toxicity. Electric Rise is 9 damage and 9 more damage if they're poisoned. So we have ways to poison in a um, Garbodor, which we'll go over later. So, but of course you are poisoning them with the previous attacks. It's 180 for three energies, two energies, if you count all the stuff I was talking about earlier, maybe even one energy. Uh, actually no, two energies, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, super easy to pull off, 180 damage is pretty good. But most importantly is the VMAX. So you're back to that 320 HP and you're weak to fighting and fighting is not really a type right now. I know we're getting, I know we have a um, Phalanx in here that we're gonna definitely be talking about. So, uh, but other than Felix, it's not really any good fighting decks right now. Like even Stonejoiner with its high HP, not really worth mentioning because it doesn't do anything really. But Giganto Riot, 106 damage, attack does 80 more damage, your opponent's attack Pokemon is poison. So you're hitting 240, which is pretty good because you have cards like the Electro Powers that can buff your damage here. So being able to, with uh, this is one of the few cards in the game that can definitely knock out a, tag, that can definitely knock out a VMAX from full, which is pretty good. Also, this is cool. It has both um, toxicities there. I know we have a low key. Didn't we get a low key promo? I think we got a low key promo, right? So I wonder if that what that low key does. I wonder if it's worth using. We'll see. I don't think so because I don't haven't heard anybody talking about it. But this is the high key and this is the low key form. But the V Max is great. Um, it was a two forty damage base, and then you can increase it with the with the electro power, so you get two seventy, which knocks out a lot of tag teams. And you get 300, which knocks out a lot of uh, V maxes and Vs. 330. So if you have three electro powers, you're pretty much knocking out everything in the game, which is pretty good. <laughs> Definitely pretty good. Uh, and the poison damage, you gotta keep that in mind. So technically, it's plus 10 damage every time. And if you play cards like, I wonder if, is, if, if cards like Saviper, the ones that do 10 more bonus damage if they're poisoned, if that's still in the format, it's actually a pretty good card because 
um, you can change this from 300 to 320 and 320 is the number that you're trying to hit with just that single card right because um, you're doing 240 right and then they're poisoned so 250 uh, but if they're poisoned if they're poisoned with uh, with uh, with an, with a single like Viper on the bench that is 260 uh, a second one is 270 so that's pretty handy but I think just this is go off two right because two is the difference between hitting 300 and 320 and 320 is a pretty important number so with two just two electro powers you can hit 320 that's enough you can do that two times a game play four electro powers so I think this is a pretty good card so those are the most important cards of the set so we're going to go ahead and go over the rest of the cards we'll start with Max rising like we were discussing already we start discussing the um Rillaboom. I don't think Rillaboom is like super good right now because like I said earlier, um, you have max barrage, max barrage, so another damage and you may discard up to three grass energies and does 50 more damage. So you can hit 150 more damage. Hitting 280 is great for sure, don't get me wrong. But like, unless you're playing something like ADP in this deck list, which is pretty unlikely, you're not gonna be hitting more than 280, maybe 290 <laughs> if you play like a, a Vitality Band. Um, but hitting 290 is going to be knocking tag teams, but not V maxes. And for that reason, it seems like a commitment to get up like the other Rilla boom to accelerate energies. Cause you're going to need like two or at least like one previous turn to set up an energy and then another manual attachment the next turn. Uh, so at least one, but two to get a bunch up in the game. And then you're discarding three energies. And it seems like a really like at 330 HP though, that is worth mentioning because 330 is not 320. And we did mention earlier about the 320 number being uh, a number that you can hit a little bit easier with a single like bench uh, snake. Is that snake still in standard though? I, I'm talking about it like it's in standard, but I actually don't know for sure, um, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's weak to fire, which is another thing as well. Thanks to uh, the tool scrapper, Fire decks are even more prominent than before because not only is fire just good, like just good, like we're constantly getting good support for fire cards, uh, but they're able to hit past the frying pans now with the tool scrapper. I'm not too sure if fire decks are going to have the space for tool scrapper, but if it becomes super relevant, then they're gonna make the space, right? So, real boom, okay, not great. Uh, Appleton, during your opponent's turn, you may flip a coin if heads choose one of your opponent's bench based Pokemon, switch out with their active Pokemon. Flip based. Um, like a, a flip based boss's order. I mean, you could technically put it in with like a ditto, but I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Like, we just have boss's orders, I don't think it's worth playing that. Uh, oh. yeah, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing a deck that would appreciate playing that, but that has a bench space and a deck space to play, I should say. Uh, Arcanine, I've seen get some talk. I don't know if this is Arcanine. Yeah, this Pokemon has a brain scarf attached to it, gets 100 more HP, so 230 HP. And with a burning scrap, you're doing 130. If they hit you, then you're they're they're taking 20 more damage. So 150, two AKOs, uh, and more importantly, you can play a scoop up net with this card. So might be something a fat HP Pokemon that has scoop up net uh, that can use welder. Of course, you can only use welder so many times. But if we have scoop up net and you play that Mewtwo slash Eldegoss slash uh, uh, Orangu combo. With scoop up net you can get welder back quite a few times so it might be it might be worth looking into i mean 230 is a, is a number that these decks can hit though which is the problem that i'm having with it is that it seems to be a number that can still be hit so eh, i'm in the air about it but it's definitely not terrible and i know my boy gumball loves fire loves arcanine so we'll see now Cinderace V Max, we I'm gonna like we have to judge this card based off all the other fire cards we have in the current in the game right now. Uh, it does have free retreat, zero retreat cost, but there's a stadium in play, which completely gets around Milotic, which is excellent because if Milotic becomes the best water deck, this is a card that doesn't even have to worry about it. I mean, it does have to worry about a second attack because it still gets O code, but it doesn't have to worry about the first attack as much, which is kind of relevant because it's a whole extra energy they have to commit, which could sometimes be difficult. Sometimes. <laughs> We'll see, but it's pretty nice being able to have free retreat as long as your stadium on board. Pretty good. Crimson Select is 140, whatever. 320, which is actually a good number because uh, Milotic hits 150. So unless they have ADP up, they can't Oko you. They can only hit you for 300, but they put you to sleep. So you gotta, you gotta wake up. <laughs> Counter, this attack does additional damage equal to the amount of damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon during your opponent's last turn. So uh, you hit, you hit what they did to you last turn plus 30 for two fire energies. And it's not too bad. We'll see. Grand Fireball, 170 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. Eh, 
Okay, so you can hit them for burn damage, so it's 190 damage for three fire energies. 320 HP, uh, eh, it's okay. It's not great, but it's fat. <laughs> it's fat and it does 190. 190 is just not enough damage for a fire deck. So uh, there's not really a consistent way to heal this, then I'm not super, I'm not super attracted to it. So we're gonna move on. Last Pokemon's play prevent all of your prevent all prevent effects of your opponent's attacks done to all of your Pokemon with energy attached to them. So prevent effects of opponent's attacks. That could be useful in the future, but it's still stage one, so probably never gonna be useful. I take it back. Inteleon. Let's see if Inteleon's any good. 200 HP. Why is it the weakest HP? I don't get it. It's fine. <laughs> this attack does more damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. I, I I really like Inteleon's design, I think it's cool. Uh, Inteleon VMAX. 60 damage, you may return an energy card from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. That's a good attack. Really? You may return an energy card from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. Hmm. There might be something here. You can play this with hammers, you can play this with uh, a lot of different stuff. Uh, you got that Team Skull Grunt that returns energies to the hand as well. A lot of these attacks are multiple energies attacks, for sure. And you're hitting 60, which is a decent number to hit. So I think there's some promise in this card. That's just really disruptive. Like, you, imagine doing this to ADP. <laughs> you go first, they attach an energy, your turn next. So you evolve into VMAX and then you hit them for 60 and then they never get off their GX attack, like ever. That's great. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, this versus Dragapult, they can never get off their second attack unless they play things like Bede. Um, and then you eventually take a knockout, and then now they're setting up with zero. Dude, this is cool. I actually like that. You, you may return an energy card from your opponent's active Pokemon to their hand. Interesting. You don't even have to. I don't really know why, why you wouldn't, but that's pretty cool. 160 damage attack to 60 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's pretty good, too. That is technically more damage than Dragapult. 320 HP. It is three energies. It does do 160 damage, though. Uh, and you can easily build into that because you're going to be stalling them with Hydro Snipe anyways. Okay, I think there's something here. There's definitely something here. I wish it didn't look so dumb. This is a really, like, this, this artwork is so much cooler. <laughs> but like, yeah, I think this card's good. I, th I, I Unless I'm wrong, I think this card is good. It's weak to lightning, which is not good, for sure. Uh, <laughs> definitely not good, for sure. Play that weak guard energy, though. <laughs> and the fact that this card kind of like, wins by itself, Means you don't have to do a lot of like bench shenanigans. Like you, it's a one energy attack that it's that can carry you throughout the game. So you don't have to worry about playing things like Frost Moth. Um, you can focus completely on consistency. I like this. I'm gonna definitely gonna give this one a try. I have to add this to my list. Uh, I have to figure out what I want to do with it, but I do like this deck. I do like the idea of it. We'll see if I can make it work. But it just seems like in the current meta, at least, it could do a lot of work. Uh, because the decks that can really hurt, hurt you are like, Welder decks, which are fire, which are weak to water, right? Because fire is the only one that can attach the energies again with welder. Uh, people are not playing Bede right now. They might play in the future, but until then, I, I don't see people playing Bede. I guess Malamar decks are kind of an issue, but Malamar decks aren't as good. And you could just snipe Malamar a bunch with this. So you can play the whole Zigzagoon scoop up nep combo, and then just pick up a bunch of Zigzagoons over and over again. And then 60 becomes 90 real quick. Um, so. I, I can definitely see a future with this card. We're going to give it a try for sure. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, Cramorant, 20 damage with a coin of heads prevent offense attack. Okay, I'm just going to read over the cards I know are good. <laughs> or the cards that I haven't looked at for, for a while now. So like this one more damage, toxic amount of energy attached to all of your Pokemon. It could be good. Nah, I doubt it though. Okay, so Bolton is another good lightning type card for lightning decks. Uh, lets you search for up to two lightning energy attachment to your bench Pokemon any way you like. So this is searching directly from the deck, which means that even if you have slow turns with any electric deck, you can still accelerate energies, which is great. And it also has a, oh, it's a two retreat cost. For some reason, I thought this was a free retreat, but it's pretty good. And it's like 30 damage for each lightning energy attached to your Pokemon in play. So this can really build up. Obviously, if you're playing Picarom, you could do like a late game, like, Say so you have six energies, 180 damage, 190 damage with this for only two energies. Definitely not bad. So it's a great card for peeking around, great card for electric decks in general. So huge fan, like it a lot. Um, let's see. 
Another card that's good for like those little stall decks is Galarian Cursula. If this is your, if this Pokemon is your opponent's, if, <laughs> if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from attack, flip a coin if has the attack Pokemon is knocked out. So this can up trade a lot because there's a lot of good decks out there that are not using non-GX Pokemon. The majority of the meta is not using non-GX Pokemon. I don't think there's any decks right now that are not doing non-GX, non-V Pokemon. Besides like maybe Malamar decks. Oh, there's Bocephalon too. And I guess there's technically Cinchino, but Cinchino is never going to attack you anyways. You're more likely going to play this in something like Cinchino. Now, it's not as good because we have boss's orders for sure. And uh, most decks can power up another Pokemon or can snipe around this and stuff like that. So maybe this card is not as good, but it's definitely annoying. <laughs> uh, definitely annoying because you can uptrade super well with this. Unless they have ADP boost and you're not uptrading at all. So yeah, this card's not that good. Actually, we're going to move on. <laughs> it's actually not that good at all. Here's another annoying card though. If this Pokemon would be damaged by an attack, flip a coin of heads prevent all damage under this Pokemon. Another irritating drag, but looks like Dragon Bolts are just the name of irritating. Uh, so it's just Whimsicott, but on a non-GX. And although Whimsicott has never like done super well in the meta, it's also been a GX Pokemon and it's also been weak to steel. <laughs> so being weak to dark is great because dark is not a relevant typing right now. We have free retreat, which is also great. Um, and 120 damage, put three damage counters, your opponent's bench Pokemon any way you like. It's literally the same as the non-GX Pokemon, as the, as the VMAX Pokemon, uh, but it has low HP. And once again, like, because uh, ADP is a deck right now, these kind of cards are not super great. But <laughs> if you get super good flips and you have those, uh, you have that special energy, you have spell tags, like this deck could definitely be something strong for sure. Yeah, actually, it's actually, let's look at the other evolutions. If there's any other baby forms, uh, quick attacks, whatever. Search your deck for a dream and put onto your bench and shuffle your deck. That's actually pretty good uh, just to continue setting up your board. And then you power up into this. And then like, these are the kind of decks you can play like a 1-1 Mally in if you're looking to consistently attack. Although you really don't need to because you're kind of spamming Infiltrator. We have cards like Rosa. This could definitely be a deck that's just like, hey, <laughs> hello, Mr. Opponent. Do you feel like flipping today? And then you just play things like the uh, scoop up net in case you got too much damage on you if they're not okoing you. Wow, that looks really annoying. We're gonna move on because that sounds super annoying. Um, got Sanaconda. I don't like it. <laughs> it. It's good acceleration, I guess, but like, it's only to itself, so it's not that great. So, Phalanx. Phalanx is kind of worth mentioning because we do have another Phalanx that scales based off Phalanx is on the bench. Search your deck for up to two basic Pokemon, put them on, put them onto your bench. That's pretty good for the Phalanx deck itself. Uh, we can actually see if we can find it real quick here, just to like you know keep the conversation, keep the keep the keep the conversation flowing pretty well. Let's see. I thought I saw it here, somewhere around here, right? Mr. Phalanx, here it is. Uh, Ooh, I thought there was a different phalanx. This is this one. Hmm. I'm pretty sure there was like a phalanx somewhere. I don't know where I saw it. It might be a promo or something. Uh, maybe if I find it later, we can talk about it later, but I'm pretty sure there's a phalanx that does 20 damage reach phalanx on your bench. Um, so it's similar to Pissimian, if you guys remember Pissimian. So it's worth mentioning. So looking at Phalanx cards are pretty important. This one being able to, you know, put the Phalanx directly onto your bench is pretty good. Uh, oh, this is that. This is the attack actually. Team attack. That goes 30 damage for each Pokemon on your bench with Phalanx in its name. Okay, so it's this one. I thought it was a V, uh, a v Pokemon, but I guess it does. It's not. <laughs> so this attack does 30 more damage for the Phalanx in its name. So and this is a Pokemon that you can play that DCE in the uh, the DC that's not a DC. So obviously. It's only on bench Pokemon, which means you can only hit 100 damage with this thing. So it's not super great, but being a fighting type is just good because electric is really good right now. As long as Pokemon's in play, damage done to your opponent, to any of your Pokemon with Phalanx in his name, by an opponent's attack is reduced by 20. So you have a, you are reducing damage by potentially 80, uh, which means that they have to hit you for 170, take an Oko, assuming you're not playing anything that increases your HP like Fighting Charm. Or not fighting charm, uh, big charm, uh, and then you're hitting them for 100 damage for a DC. It's okay. It's definitely not super strong though. So, eh, it's worth mentioning. Uh, Grim Snarl. So let's put one direct Pokemon. Your Pokemon pays colors more to use its attacks. We have Gumi. We have Aerodactyl. That's not super interesting. 
um big shield as long as the pokemon can play any damage into your pokemon by attacks is reduced by 30. uh i mean more reduction for lucario my metal it's a stage two so i don't see myself playing it but something worth mentioning once again would not make my list this card would make my list though da damage into this pokemon is reduced by 30. 210 hp so it's 240 hp more or less exactly actually if you if they want to oko you and does 120 damage plus 30 more damage for each prize card your opponent's taken so the whole idea is that they take five prize cards you're hitting them for 270 for three energies which can be charged up through malamar through uh frost moth into like energy switches and through welder through adp if they play adp you're technically hitting 30 more damage if they have the boost on you so what is that 270 becomes 300 300 is pretty good 300 knocks out the majority of the game that isn't a b max so Pretty good card. Uh, I don't know if you would play it. It's kind of like the Cramorant effect to me, where like I want to play it in every deck, but I don't know if I would play it in every deck. But it's good regardless. It's weak to fighting. Fighting's not relevant. So bear with me, guys. We are almost done. We already talked about the majority of the cards in this set, anyway. So we're gonna run through the rest of them. This has been a 40-minute video. So if you guys have went, if you guys have watched this far into the video, comment. Um, Push down Heracross. <laughs> I don't know. Do something. Uh, nothing really relevant so far, except for Eldegoss, which is another one of the probably the best Pokemon. That's like it's like it's got that Tapu Lele effect kind of thing. Once during your turn, when you play this card from your hand to your bench, you may put a supporter card from your discard pile into your hand. It is a Quick Ball. The Quick Ball has now become a VS Seeker essentially because. Uh, you can just get a support. It's a, it's a VS Seeker, but in a Pokemon form. Now, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, it's got more HP than the Dene does, which is pretty relevant. Uh, but it's another one of those bench sitters that you can't really get rid of because Scoop of Net does not pick it up. But when has that ever stopped us from playing good cards like this, right? Being able to put a Boss's Orders back into your hand, being able to put a Research back into your hand, a Marnie, any of those other like tech supporters that you play pretty good you can definitely see this card being a one over two of in every deck uh that doesn't play the whole scoop up net into mew rangu combo which you know they both have their merits for sure guys it is nearly midnight actually it's past midnight now we've been recording for a while once during your turn you may put two damage cards on one of your opponent's pokemon then shuffle this card and all cards attach to it into your deck nah i was trying to think of ways you can play make play we play this in like a ditto deck to shuffle the ditto back and yeah it's not that great moving on now, i've heard good things about nine tails 200 hp uh choose one of your opponent's active pokemon and use attacks and use it as this attack so it's not bad it doesn't it doesn't stop you from using their gx attack so you can use this against adp and take their gx attack which is actually kind of good for a fire deck uh it's actually really good for a fire deck because a fire deck doesn't have like amazing GX attacks it wants to use if you're not playing Mewtwo. And Mewtwo kind of gets weaker because of Dragapult being a thing. Uh, so that's actually really cool. Like being able to be a fire deck and then use <laughs> ADP's GX attack uh, is great. Not to mention like just attacks right now are really good. So for three energies you can copy an attack that does like 130 plus five damage patterns to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon or does 210 damage to you or you know can hit you for 230 and then you can't attack the following turn things like that and then flamethrower is 180 damage you're not using it for flamethrower so this is a really good tech option in fire i actually am really excited about this card nine tails is one of my favorite pokemon so to see nine tails be good makes me happy even though nine tails has just always been good because of its gusting <laughs> we got magmortar okay moving on uh let's see Milotic V. So here's Milotic we're talking about. 210 HP, of course, just like all the other Vs, it's a basic. So it's got a single water energy for its attack cost. So it's actually pretty useful and relevant to know if you're playing this in ADP because you can charge it up with an ADP attack or you can go the Frost Moth route. Regardless, it's easy to charge up and it's really easy to break up damage because um, you have that stadium we talked about that increases by two. Then you have things like Absol. So you can easily like essentially the stadium is plus 100 damage so you're doing 110 and then you have adp boost which is 140. um and then you play every every absolute you have on your bench is an extra 50 damage so 190 to 40 to 90. of course you're not going to play you're probably not going to have enough bench space for more than two so 
I'm, I, it's pretty good. I'm not really seeing all the hype around it, uh, besides the fact that it's water. And uh, it's, it's weakness to lightning is very off-putting for sure, but it is water, which is good against fire, uh, clearly. <laughs> Obvious statement, or bomb. But uh, it can rack up damage. Of course, that's assuming they have a free retreat cost, right? Like, um, most of these Pokemon have a two retreat cost, which means you're already doing 100 more damage. So with the stadium, you're hitting 210 against them. With a single Absol, it becomes 260, 200, uh, 310, which is actually pretty good. And if you think about it in that sense, it becomes a pretty good card. Uh, Dragapult B, it's less useful against because of course they only have a one retreat cost. Now, what are some other amazing decks right now? Zacian has a three retreat cost. So you're gonna be easily Okoing that thing. Um, same with ADP. You'll be Okoing things. Okay, I can see its usefulness. It really depends on the meta. Uh, but if the meta has high retreat Pokemon, this card becomes pretty good. And of course you can stall them with sleep if you're only gonna be doing them anyways. So Hypno Splash, not too bad either. Okay, I can see the hype. I don't know if it's better than Zacian because Zacian is consistent 230 damage, 260 with ADP boost. Uh, and then you can play things like Zamazenta in the Zacian build. So I don't know if it's better. I, I'm pretty sure it's not. But if you're, you can easily just throw this into a Frostmoth deck um, with like some bench space if you have the bench space. Frostmoth is difficult because you don't always have the bench space for it. Um, because Frostmoth actually takes up a lot of, like the deck itself has a lot of Pokemon being taken up, having the bench being taken up. So, eh, we'll see. But it's basic. So it could be better than uh, Lapras VMAX because obviously you have the dedicated space to the VMAX as well and ways to search the VMAX. So not having to do all that and just play the Milotic V by itself with maybe a few Absols on the bench could be pretty good. So I am I'm a, I am a fan of the, of the Milotic. <sighs> see if there's anything left. Uh, anything worth mentioning? This Ice Cube actually, it's a basic. Attack to send damage to your bones, bench Pokemon. Okay. Any attacks done to this is reduced by 60 of his max HP. Boring. Boring. If you draw this card from your deck at the beginning of your turn and there's room on your bench, instead of putting it onto your hand, you may play it directly onto your bench. I mean, we do have that Luxury that is like item lock and expanded, but eh, I'm not seeing this card being super great. We talked about electricity, more Pico, one of my favorite Pokemon. Look how cute this guy is. He's literally on an aura wheel. I am or bomb. He's got pockets. Best Pokemon. This makes me sad to see fairy types being psychic types and not fairy types in the game. It actually just hurts my feeling. If this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, damage by its attack. Place three damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Combine that with spell tags and the mystery energy. You can put a lot of damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon, but it's not really worth. We have other Pokemon like. We have other Pokemon that are just better if you're looking to soak up hits or like punish them for taking knockouts and stuff like that. Uh, putting damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon is not super great. Uh, even if it's attack, psychic damage is good. It's only good after they've hit you. So they can control when they hit you. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's, I don't think it's that great though. Mind Hat, once during your turn, you may have each player discard one card from their hand. Um, nice way to thin, I guess, but I don't see myself playing it for just that. Put damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon equal to the number of Pokemon in your discard pile. Now that's interesting. Um, maybe not in standard, but could you imagine playing this in expanded? You just play like a bunch of like research or sycamore, whatever you want to call it, Juniper, and then battle compressors, and then you quick ball, ultra ball, and then you can play eggs, and then you can constantly get them back for your discard effects. Dude, that could be crazy. You could be putting 33, uh, 30 damage counters. Putting 300 damage to half your deck is Pokemon. That's gonna be kind of cool. I don't know if you can do this in expanded and standard very much Because we oh, we have access to research quick ball treasure tag call um, You could easily make half of your deck Pokemon uh, But then like what's the other half going to be so, I mean obviously trainers and energies, right, but like how are you going to be able to consistently play this, uh, evolve up into this, as well as have a bunch of random Pokemon you can throw in the discard pile and have manual attachments that you can attach? Although you only really need one, so you don't need as many energies. I don't know. It could be fun experimenting around once we get it on TCGO. Uh, probably won't play it until we get it on TCGO because it feels like quite the task, but I think it could be cool. 
We talked about the Dragon Pulse. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else worth mentioning? Oh, there's a new Colossal Tag Generator. Once during your turn, you may switch your discard pile for fire and fighting energy attachment to your Pokemon any way you like. Uh, historically, these cards have never been good unless there's been a way to cheat them out, like uh, with Blastoise. But the fact that we can attach energies from the discard pile is not bad. Uh, it's great for fighting decks, as fighting decks have never really had acceleration. If there's not a way to cheat this out, though, I'm not really seeing it being very popular. So we're going to move on. Um, Galarian Weezing, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each of, you, each of your opponent's Pokemon has no ability, ex excluding chemical change gas. So that's pretty good. Poison for four damage counters. It's a great Pokemon to switch into uh, with things like Hitmonchan, Hit and Run, or like Donwing, keeping it active and stuff like that. Ending your turn with it active, maybe milling uh, with Sinchino and then like keeping this active so they don't have abilities. I can see this being good. I'm not super sure how relevant decks are going to be on abilities, uh, especially like past turn one because you're going to play your Dedenes down, you're going to use your Zacian's like uh, abilities already, things like that. They don't really care about a past turn one. So I'm not super sure if this is going to be relevant right now, but it's definitely a good card and worth holding on to. We got Garbodor here. As long as there's a stadium play, you leave your opponent's active Pokemon Poison. So that's good with the, uh, with the Toxtricity deck. So obviously it's a great card because you gotta play it in Toxtricity. I mean, you don't technically have to, but it's there. Definitely a good option. Malamar, um, I mean, we do have Dark Support in Weavile, I guess. <laughs> uh, drag off, choose one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, switch with their active Pokemon, this goes 30 damage to the new Pokemon. So for two energies, you do 30 damage to any Pokemon you want. Eh. 130 damage and leaves them confused. Pretty boring. 310 HP, which is actually not a good number. 320 is actually so much better. Uh, but we discussed it throughout the video, but 180 damage, your opponent reveals their hand, choose one card that you find there and put it on the bottom of your opponent's deck. That's a great attack. That is definitely a really strong attack. Um, if you play ways to pick this card up, like maybe landing a few super scoop ups or something, you play with Weavile and move the energies off of it. Being able to look at your opponent's hand and choosing any card you find there and getting rid of it is great. So, We'll see. This could be a good card. I'm still not sold on it because it's dark and <laughs> you gotta play Weavile, but it's, it could be good for sure. A few metal Pokemon. Copperage, uh, Copperaja, Copper, Copperaja, 220 HP. The VMAX has 240 HP, so it's a thick man. Uh, combined with Lucario Melmetal and Frying Pan, there's a lot of a lot of big HP. <laughs> uh, you thought that Super Lucario Memo deck we made was fat. This dude is gargantuan. Uh, 100 damage of your opponent's active Pokemon's basic Pokemon attack does 100 more damage. So if you play this with ADP, you hit 230, which can knock out a Zashkin in one hit. And then 240 damage for four energy. Definitely not bad. It could be a good ADP target. Could be a good Lucario Memo target. It could be just a good stall target. I think Gumball was telling me about a deck list he was playing that involves like attacking and tanking non-stop just throughout the whole entire game with this card so i am excited to try something like that join the discord by the way <laughs> link in the description once during your turn you may play this card from your hands your bench you may flip a coin of heads choose a supporter card you find there so it's a flip version of eldegoss sucks i don't like flips <laughs> i am not a fan of the flips and i think that's it once during your turn, you may search your deck for a Pokemon tool card, reveal and put it into your hand. It's not bad. It's not great though for stage two. Quickly, let's run through some of the Charizard and, and uh, Grimmsnarl cards, just to give them a quick look through. Uh, Charizard does 220 damage and discard two energies. And Charizard VMAX does 300 damage and discard two energies. Uh, so true to Charizard's name, the card is absolutely gorgeous. Does a lot of damage and that's it. Um, and then we got actually Hydreigon here, which is once again, another version of uh, these rain dance cards that are probably not going to see play, but are cool in theory. Uh, so often as you like, you may touch a dark energy from your hands on your Pokemon. Here we got Grimmsnarl V, which does 220 damage, return two dark energy from this Pokemon to your hand. So obvious, obvious energy with Hydreigon is obvious. Uh, it's a cool looking card though. Grimmsnarl is a really cool Pokemon. And then you have Grimmsnarl V Max, it's with 
ridiculous, unnecessary text that makes this card not as good. 170 damage, the text is 50 more damage for each extra dark energy attached to this Pokemon, but not used to pay for this attack. Energy beyond the second doesn't count. So if you guys know what that means, that means that um, for every extra energy attached to this Pokemon, <laughs> it does 50 more damage, but you can only add 100 damage this way. So the essentially the most you can do with this card is 270 on its own. That kind of sucks. You know, that kind of takes away why the card would be good. Um, because like attaching six energy to this thing is quite the task. So it's not like, I don't know, I feel so unnecessary, right? Because attaching six energy to it is really annoying. Because uh, then you like healing it is going to be kind of obnoxious. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like they didn't, maybe if they made it like only 40 plus damage or 30 plus damage or something, it just felt like it was unnecessary to give it a cap to its damage. I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but I mean, it's 330 HP, which is a good number of HP. It's a cool Pokemon. 270 damage combined with like Frying Pan is not Frying Pan, uh, Vitality Band is 280. Um, it's not like you're going to play ADP in this list, so you're not going to hit 300. Um, yeah, it sucks, but it's not great, unfortunately. And that's going to be it. So this has been all, this has been almost an hour long. Uh, if you guys have watched this whole video, thank you for watching. Don't forget to drop likes, like, subscribe, share all that good jazz. Let me know what decks you want to see me build first. Let me know what decks you want to see me build the most. Let me see. Let me know what decks you are going to build first and what you're going to build the most and uh, what you want to build the most. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully with a tabletop matchup. Peace.